Okay, folks, this is our 1967 M715 five quarter ton weapons carrier manufactured by Jeep from 1967 through 1969. This is a Jeep that I've owned since uh, 2004. Uh, we started restoration in late 2004, uh, finishing up in early uh, spring of 2005. This truck has been well around the military vehicle show circuit. Uh, she's been in a lot of magazines. Um, we did win a gold medal at the Military Vehicle Preservation Association um, Nationals in 2011 with it. Uh, this truck at that time was a full nut and bolt restoration. Every piece of metal was taken apart, stripped of bare metal, reprimed, repainted, reassembled. Um, it's a little bit older of a restoration now, but still holding in really well. Still making a showstopper at any of the shows we take her to. And of course we have the vehicle set up uh, with 50 cal on top. So we do have a Browning M2 50 cal mounted on a pedestal mount in the bed and Before a lot of you people start screaming that well, there are no mounts for the 715 to put a 50 cal in it um, I have found a handful of original pictures uh, with an M715 with 50 cal mounts, so uh, While there wasn't an official pedestal mount for it uh, You know like anything in the military they were born out of necessity and uh, motor pull fabricated, and uh, that's what we've done here, uh, using bits and pieces of other uh, mounts to uh, fabricate what we feel uh, makes a good representation uh, for this truck. So the M715 is a five quarter ton weapons carrier uh, and like all military vehicles of its time, it is a convertible. So the windshield will fold down flat. Uh, there is a soft frame uh, to put the soft top on. It mounts here across the back, goes up to the front and stretches across uh, to mount the soft top. Of course, windows roll up and down. Um, and there are two um, cozy wing windows that are removable that uh, mount down through the slots here. Um, and of course the troop seats come up and down and uh, fold. you can take those out so that you can basically lower the profile of the vehicle for shipping. Uh, which was one of the requirements of the military back in the day. Uh, this is one of the last uh, cargo vehicles uh, from the military that was designed as a convertible top. Because as we know, the uh, 990 series Dodge uh, in 1975 that replaced this vehicle uh, was basically just a standard one-ton Dodge pickup truck with a full hard cab. So now, of course, this vehicle does use the front sheet metal uh, from the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck series from the 60s. Uh, and simply what they did is they did, they just left off the hard cab at the rear pinch weld. And then, of course, fabricated the folding windshield brackets, uh, used a windshield very similar to an M38A1. Uh, and then, as you can see, capped off where the original Gladiator windshield would have been. Um, there's even still the original knockouts where the original Gladiator windshield wipers would have came out through the cowl vent. 
But the cowl, the hood, the doors, the rear, the cab, uh, the fenders, with the exception of making the addition for the wider fender flares and the front valance, are all standard Jeep Gladiator parts. Uh, you can even see things like uh, where the original knockouts are for the original turn signals. Mounting tabs for the original grills, known as the old Rhino grill. Uh, and some guys have been able to uh, fit the Rhino grill in here. Uh, it does take a little modification because it is very tight here at the top, um, where Jeep has added the brush guard. Of course, you have a standard blackout driving light. Military folding style mirrors. Troop seats, fuel cans, pioneering tools. So one of the unique things about uh, this vehicle is that uh, the pioneering tools have specific mounts on both sides of the bed instead of the more standardized uh, pioneering tool rack that was used on a lot of the, the vehicles of the time. So you have individual vehicles or individual pioneering tools on each side. So you have on this side the Maddox and the Axe. And of course on the other side you have your shovel. The rear you have your standard fold down tailgate. Uh, and of course on an M715, uh, if you're looking for one for a restoration, make sure it has the tailgate because the tailgate uh, was unique to this vehicle and is very hard to find and very expensive to find if it is missing. Um, common with these vehicles after their military service they went to fire departments and forestry service and a lot of times the tailgates were removed for putting in firefighting equipment and stuff like that and uh, tailgates were lost and it's made them very desirable so make sure you got a good tailgate you have your standard pinnel towing hitch your bumperettes with tow shackles your small original style brake lights turned with turn signals, your blackout stoplight, and trailer towing uh, receptacle on this side. Spare tire is mounted from underneath. We do have a radio mounted in this vehicle. We have an RT. 524 radio mounted that is fully functioning so we have the radio mounted in the back on the troop seats out through the radio antenna and on up the interiors are very spartan like most all military vehicles uh, door panels are just simple steel panels with cutouts to be able to thread in and thread out the bolts for the cozy wings. Standard flat dash. Uh, you can see where they cut and adapted that into the uh, Gladiator uh, dash that was part of the cab. This one we have added the optional commander's rifle mount that mounts an M16 to the dash. Now, normally there is also an M16 mount behind the driver's seat, but as you can see, I have that seat modified so that it sits further back uh, compared to the passenger seat, basically to give myself a little bit more room because I am a fairly tall guy and it gives me a little more ease of getting in and out and driving the vehicle. Standard glove box. Shifter for the T98 transmission, parking brake. We'll go around to the other side and see the levers a little bit better. Uh, we have your basic folding seats. They fold forward. 
Uh, this one has a decontamination bracket with a decontamination bottle mounted to the back side. You have stowage straps across the back that allow you to uh, mount the soft top accessories uh, when they're off the vehicle. Uh, you can store them here against the back wall. I of course have them removed completely from the vehicle because there's no sense rattling them around in the back. And of course we have the battery box. Uh, unique on the 715 is the battery box is actually in the driver's cab. Um, we have a couple accessories here, helmet, hat, and of course every GI's favorite. We have to have a little entertainment for them, keep them uh, occupied uh, during those uh, long drives or uh, long, long halts waiting for uh, the convoy to get moving. We'll go around to the other side of the cab there, show you some more. So there is that shifter, parking brake, and then of course the transfer case levers. You have two transfer case levers. One engages four wheel drive and the other engages high and low range. Your standard military style uh, information center, speedometer, fuel gauge, oil pressure, temperature, and voltmeter with a high beam indicator in the middle. Pretty similar to the one in the M38A1 and several other vehicles from the time period. Your standard military three lever light switch, a master power switch, and the start button on the transmission hump. This vehicle does have uh, the heater in it. So we have the uh, three cables to operate the fresh air, the heat, and the defrost. And I do have electric wipers in this vehicle. We have the driver's seat, and of course we have a fire extinguisher mounted to the back. More stowage straps for the soft top accessories. And something somewhat unique. So on all these vehicles, um, because it uses the civilian components, on the horn button, uh, normally this clear lens is actually just painted green. Uh, and it wasn't long before young GIs figured out that you could pop that green cover off and underneath it was the original Chrome Jeep logo. Uh, so a lot of times they just pop those off. So I wanted to preserve that look of the, the Jeep logo. But what I did is I went out and found the uh, clear cover from the uh, early 60s Jeep and it snaps right on. Gives you that good smooth horn button, but shows off that original Jeep logo, so. A little bit of a change here on this vehicle, but it uh, just gives it a little bit of added fun. Uh, same thing, we changed out the, the shift knob with an eight ball, just to get a little fun. I mean, uh, you have to put a little personalization into vehicles, it makes them fun. Here you can see that RT524 radio. And this is a fully functioning radio that I was able to restore. Uh, find all the parts and uh, get it back up and going. And then of course on this side, we do have a working PRC-77. We got a couple other features. So we have a uh, lightweight jungle ruck uh, from the Vietnam era. And we have that hanging on the vehicle with the poncho and Entrenching tool and bayonet and some smoke grenades and spare canteens. And then of course on this side, this side we have the uh, indigenous pack uh, that was issued to the Arvin soldiers, but was quite commonly used by special forces because of 
it was lightweight uh, and a little less descript. Uh, so we have that all set up. Same thing with entrenching tool and bayonet and some spare canteens. Just to help fill out the vehicle. And of course, like we saw before, um, we do have that M16 mounted on the dash. And we got bandolier and uh, a few other bits and pieces to help, to help decorate the inside of the vehicle. Just helps convey that, uh, that military lived-in feel. And then, of course, here on the front fender. So this is your 24-volt uh, slave receptacle for jump-starting the vehicle. And so if the batteries were to be dead, you can bring over another military vehicle with 24 volt. Open that, get out the 12 volt or the 24 volt slave receptacle cords that'll plug into there, plug them into the other vehicle and jump start the vehicles. Now, one of the things I do have on this vehicle that are not original, um, we have lockout hubs on the front. Um, these are not original to the vehicle, but it is a common add just because it does disconnect that front drivetrain uh, and let it freewheel a lot better. One of the other things is we do not have original NDT military tires on this truck. Uh, this is a set of uh, Super Swamper radials. Uh, they, I put them on the truck uh, mainly because uh, they ride a lot as a radial they ride a lot better and let's face it at a five quarter ton truck uh, These things ride pretty rough on the road. So uh, that little bit softer tire Gives it a little bit more comfortable of a ride um, These tires are basically the same overall Dimensions same just a touch taller by about a half inch and the same width so uh, they fit the stock rims uh, the aggressive nature of the tire gives it a very military look um, and hardly anybody ever even notices that it's not the original military style tires on the front. Of course we have the headlights and the original small uh, military marker turn signals and convoy lights. Tow shackles. and what's known as the military vehicle bridge weight. So what the bridge weight is, is a uh, plate removable with removable numbers that allows you to uh, specify the weight classification of the vehicle, whether it's empty, fully loaded, or towing a trailer, so that as you came upon a bridge with a sentry, uh, that sentry could easily spot the weight class of the vehicle and know whether or not that vehicle was cleared to pass the bridge. And of course, under the hood, we have the standard Jeep 230 Tornado inline six motor. Uh, this motor was an adaptation from the civilian 230 Tornado motor uh, into a military configuration. Uh, they changed a few bits and pieces to uh, make it for the military, uh, mainly changing uh, the front motor mount plates, uh, the water pump, and then adding uh, all the proper brackets and accessories to add the 24 volt stuff and the closed uh, deep water fording ignition. This vehicle does have a heater core and box and it does have the upgraded solid state turn signal. Uh, even though the solid state turn signal box didn't come out until after production had ended on these Jeeps, uh, it was quite common uh, for these to be added in during the end of their service life uh, once the original relay boxes uh, began to fail. So 
it all bolts right in, fits right in, and uh, just helps give a nice uh, clean look underneath the hood compared to the old relay box. Uh, we do have the air cleaner with the mushroom cap. And of course, uh, for fording situations, the mushroom cap came off and there was a fording tube uh, that could be run. And then you cut and came out through the fender and went up the side of the windshield and placed that mushroom cap at the top. Uh, I prefer the look without the fording tubes. Uh, so we're gonna keep it looking that way. Our standard Spartan military beep beep horn. And one of the things we've added is we've added the siren, mainly just for parades, so that we can uh, have a little fun in parades, make a little noise. Uh, gives a very kind of air raid sound to it. We'll go ahead and fire this up and let you hear the sound of the original 230. Here we have some video of the M2 Browning. This is a replica gun made by Hoosier Hotshots out of Indiana. This is a full metal replica. And this is a propane simulator gun, in which it has all the solenoids and electronics. And of course we then have the lines running down and we have a propane bottle and an oxygen bottle hidden in the big ammo box underneath. It does allow this gun to give a nice, nice loud report and uh, makes a pretty good, uh, pretty good spectacle uh, when we do fire it off for, for spectators and people. And here is the 524 radio. And we do have it fully working. And it will key up and transmit. And that working PRC-77. And of course we have some smoke grenades and a headphone set and a flashlight and the antenna bag mount located there with it. So that's going to wrap up our walk around on that 1967 Evan 715 five quarter ton weapons carrier. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below as we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we greatly appreciate everyone's comments, likes, and subscriptions. So thank you much.